Ladies and gentlemen, what you just witnessed was a was an undetailed but highly provocative cut and paste rant by Hot Dog Fail, one of YouTube's finest cut and pasters. In his free time, Hot Dog likes googling his research, not reading books, and copying off of Wikipedia. My endeavor here is to refute a handful of his points concerning Hussein Obama's accomplishments. There are many more underneath the video at the link. To save time, I had them go across rather quickly. Feel free to go back and pause the video, read them at your leisure. Many of his points were so generalized, I'm not sure he even knew what he was stating. And even more were redundant. There were several that could have been placed in the same category. I assume he did this to make his list seem more powerful. Many of them were just plain false, and that's what happens when you rely on guys like Keith Overbite, Dylan Radigan, Daily Coast, and Wikipedia for talking points. Let's get started. Hot Dog Fail says, number 20, Obama ended previous policy of awarding no-bid contracts. Not true, little man. Interested users can see my Barack Hussein Obama's no-bid contract dilemma video. Obama continued the process of no-bid contracts in 2009. This from January of this year, quote, Despite Hussein Obama's long history of criticizing the Bush administration for sweetheart deals with favored contractors, the Obama administration this month, this is back in January, awarded a $25 million federal contract for work in Afghanistan to a company owned by a Democratic campaign contributor without entertaining competitive bids. The contract awarded on January 4, 2010 to Chechi and Company Consulting Incorporation, a Washington-based firm owned by economist and Democrat donor Vincent V. Chechi, will pay the firm 20, over $24 million to provide rule of law stabilization, stabilization services in war-torn Afghanistan. The commander-in-chief claimed the move would save taxpayers tens of billions annually, though little has changed in the system. <coughs> Excuse me. More than 543 million in federal deals have been awarded without compensation in the last few months alone. The money has come from Obama's failed stimulus program, end quote. So no, he didn't end the no-bid contract uh, thing. Hot dog fail. Next hot dog fail cannered. Number 22, Obama ended the previous, previous policy of cutting the FDA and circumventing FDA rules. Hot dog fail doesn't bother with providing us any details of how FDA rules were circumvented, but as far as cutting the FDA, that's not happening. The FDA is under the auspices of HHS. Its budget appropriations have not been significantly cut. The only year it was cut in nominal dollars was fiscal year 2007. The next two years it made large jumps. During Bush's tenure, fiscal years 2002 through 2009, FDA appropriations went from $1.496 billion to $2.622 billion. The increases when Bush was in the White House and the GOP-controlled Congress were modest, but in spite of that, according to the CDC, Quote, between 1996 and 2009, the rate of confirmed foodborne bacterial contamination has fallen by a third. And, quote, according to a recent survey by the Government Accountability Office, only 36% of FDA managers believe the agency is keeping pace with scientific advances. End quote. So that one's false, too. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, little guy. Next, and I'm continuing combining several in this one. He could have put them all in one category, but he was cutting and pasting, and he doesn't know better. Number 38. Obama provided the Department of Veterans Affairs with more than $1.4 billion to improve services to America's veterans. Number 37. Families of fallen soldiers have expenses. Woo! That's really, uh, that's detailed. 44. Improved housing for military personnel. 47. Improving benefits for veterans. This guy's an idiot. 52. Increasing pay and benefits for military personnel. Number 11. <laughs> Authorized construction slash opening of additional health centers to care for veterans. 45. Improved conditions at Walter Reed Military Hospital and other military hospitals. End quote. That's, this is what he does a lot. He's always generalizing. He tries to hit you with a lot of things at once. For my rebuttal, I utilize OMB historical data. I've referenced this to Hot Dog Fail before, but he's apparently a slow learner. If we peruse Table 4.1, we see that the Veterans Affairs budget was $50.868 billion in fiscal year 2002, an increase to $95.457 billion in fiscal year 2009. If we go to Table 3.2, we see that, quote, family housing, end quote, for our military did actually shrink 
3.736 billion in fiscal year 2002 to 2.721 billion in fiscal year 2009. Hot dog is probably saying, "Aha! Bush did cut our veterans. He doesn't care." Not so fast, little man. Scroll down a bit further, and you'll find that quote, "Veterans benefits and services," end quote, which includes quote, "income security for veterans." veterans education, training and rehabilitation, hospital and medical care for veterans, veterans housing and other veterans benefits and services, end quote, increased markedly. It was 50.929 billion in fiscal year 2002 and increased to 95.429 billion in fiscal year 2009. Now go to table 11.1 .1 concerning quote, federal employees, retirement and insurance, military retirement, end quote, and, quote, veterans service connected compensation, end quote. Those two together totaled $57.478 billion in fiscal year 2002, an increase to $82.076 billion in fiscal year 2008. Hosp quote, hospital and medical care for veterans, end quote, increased from $22.384 billion in fiscal year 2002 to $31.096 billion in fiscal year 2008. Quote, veterans education benefits, end quote, increased from $1.681 billion to, to uh, $3.607 billion in the same time frame. Now go to, this is a still table 11.3, quote, veterans insurance and burial benefits. It increased from 1.32 billion to 1.364 billion in the same time frame. Hot dogs fails argument collapses when one looks into the figures diligently, but he hasn't looked at anything but some schmuck on the nightly snooze reading off a teleprompter. All those figures are nominal dollars, by the way. Next, next hot dog cannard, he says, number six, Obama has made education a national priority. I snipped that quote off. 58. Protected 300,000 education jobs, such as teachers, principals, librarians, and counselors, through the Recovery Act that would have been otherwise lost. 69. New funds for school construction. That's pretty powerful. One of the references I provided, and they're all at the link under the video for all to peruse at your leisure, was my refuting liberal talking points were not spending enough on education video and other statistics such as the National Center for Education Statistics. Listen up, hot dog fail. Inflation adjusted per pupil spending has increased from 2000, this is inflation adjusted, little man, 2,703 in 1960 to 10,720 in 2006. While the uh, Stucher, <laughs> student teacher ratio has decreased from 27.5 to 1 in 1950 to 15.5 to 1 in 2006, the real inflation adjusted cost of a K through 12 education has skyrocketed from 38,000 to 150,000 in 2009 constant dollars. We haven't seen good test results either. We spend much more than the OECD average just so we can place on the bottom third or quarter in math and science testing. New York State, along with 11 other states, increased education payrolls as their enrollment dropped. New York school spending of 17173 per pupil as of the 07-08 school year was the highest of any state, 67% above the national average according to the latest Census Bureau data between 2000-2001 and 2008-2009. New York schools added 14,746 teachers and 8,655 non-teaching professionals even as enrollment was dropping by over 121,000 pupils. We're spending gobs of money, outlays for the Federal Department of Education, which is unconstitutional in my opinion. The U.S. Constitution does not mention education. It would be delegated to the states under the 10th Amendment. Those outlays for the Federal Department of Education have skyrocketed from 23.3 billion, this is inflation adjusted constant dollars, 23.3 billion in 1970 to 28 billion in 1990 to 70.5 billion in 2009. If you take a gander at, quote, total education, training, employment, and social services, end quote, 
The totals are, in the same time frame, 40.1 billion, 43.2 billion, and 88.6 billion. Remember, those are inflation-adjusted dollars. Yet with all this spending, we spend more than the average OECD, OECD nation. We still end up with dumb people like Hot Dog Fail running around thinking they're intelligent. Here's his next canard. Number 48, increased infrastructure spending, roads, bridges, power plants after years of neglect. Totally false. If we take a gander at table 8.8 .8, again on OMB historicals, we can add up, quote, ground transportation, air transportation, and water and other transportation, end quote. The fiscal year 1990 total in constant dollars is 44.9 billion. 53.4 billion in 2000 and 71.3 billion in 2009. Where's the cutting, little man? Problem is, and I pointed this out in my video on public transportation, that a lot of these funds go to failing and government controlled public transportation projects rather than let those who ride it fund it. Nature trails, museums, and whatnot. Much of it is wasted, but what else does one expect from an overreaching government? The Department of Transportation has increased its outlays substantially, this is Table 4.1, increasing from $25.642 billion nominal dollars in 1990 to $41.555 billion in 2000 and $73.004 billion in 2009. Again, there are no substantial cuts or cuts at all for that matter. They're keeping up with inflation. Now go to Table 12.2 and look at, quote, transportation. The federal government doled out $19.174 billion in transportation grants to state and local entities in fiscal year 1990. That increased to $32.222 billion in 2000 and increased again to $55.438 billion in fiscal year 2009 nominal dollars. There is no cutting going on, but hot dog fail utilizes a fallacious liberal talking point nonetheless. Since he mentioned bridges, perhaps he doesn't know. According to the U.S. Bureau of Transportation statistics, over 24% of bridges were, quote, structurally deficient, end quote, in 1990. The total was less than 12% in 2008. Over 80% of the structurally deficient bridges are in rural areas, which doesn't mean they're not important, but it does mean they're not seeing thousands upon thousands of semi-tractor trailers, dump trucks, and other heavy vehicles driving over them all day. I have time for one more hot dog cannard. So again, his point there was completely BS. Number 57, limits on lobbyist access to the White House. 59, limits on White House aides working for lobbyists after their tenure in the Obama administration. Also not true, as I pointed out in my Hussein Obama versus Hussein Obama on lobbyist video. Obama has hardly limited the influence of lobbyists in his administration. He has appointed no less than 50 lobbyists, and many of them raised funds for his campaign. Former SEIU top dog Andy Stern visited the White House no less than 22 times in 2009. George Soros met with Hussein Obama at least twice. The list that Hussein, the Hussein Obama White House released was heavily redacted. Many visitors we still don't know about. Lastly, hot dog fail. Little man, I dare you, to quote a famous movie line, I double dog dare you, son, to upload a video or blog response to me. You obviously have a lot of free time on your hands. It's easier to keep track of your and refute your rants if you're not cutting and pasting on numerous channels. As more people post and your comments move down the thread, nobody will remember or care what you said three months from now. Unless, of course, I take more screenshots. Have a nice day and don't thank me now.